So up until now, we've been talking about single oscillators in isolation. But here we have a system of connected oscillators. So each one of these oscillators is a steel bar, and through the center there is a wire that runs along all of them. And if I start one to move here, you can see the oscillators adjacent to it are caused uh, to vibrate as well. And a medium such as this, where you've got connected oscillators, gives rise to one of the most important phenomena in all of physics, and that phenomenon is called a wave. And waves are how we transmit energy and information through a medium. So for example, you're listening to me now because of sound waves, and you can see me because of light waves. So to describe a wave, we need to first of all look at the oscillators that make it up. Now an oscillator, we've already described, it has an amplitude. So if I start a wave uh, along this system here, you can see that each of these oscillators is vibrating with a particular amplitude, and it's also vibrating with a particular frequency. So an amplitude and a frequency is also something that a wave will possess. Now the difference between a wave and an oscillator is that a wave has a physical extent. Right? We have a direction in space here, we call this the x-axis, we're going to have an x-coordinate, and you can see when I create a wave that the oscillators at different positions in space have different phases. So they're not all going up and all going down together. Some are up, some are down, and so we're going to have a phase difference between the oscillators as we move along this medium. Now, the distance that I have to move to go through one complete cycle, so in other words, from one oscillator that's in the maximum upwards position, creating a wave crest, to the next oscillator that's in the upwards position, creating the next wave crest, that distance is what we call a wave length. Now, when we were talking about an oscillator, we also introduced a thing called the angular frequency, and that was the rate of change of phase with respect to time. Well, now for a wave, we have a rate of change of phase with respect to distance, and that is, of course, related to the wavelength, because that's the distance you need to go through a phase change of 2 pi. And so we have a new quantity that we call the wave number, and that is the distance that you, uh, the phase dif difference that you have per meter of length along the direction of the wave. Now, the last quantity that we want to introduce here, and I'll set the wave going again, is that you can see that the wave crests appear to move along the medium. And the wave crest, as we talked about, is a point where all the oscillators have the same phase, and the velocity of the wave crest is therefore the velocity of a point of constant phase, and so we call that the phase velocity of the wave. So to see how these quantities are related to one another, let's look at them on the computer. So here we have a picture of the wave. So imagine we've used a, a camera and we've taken a photograph of the wave at one instant in time, and this is what we see. So this axis here is the y-axis, and that is the displacement of the medium. The equilibrium position of the medium is going to be along this line here, but because the wave is passing through it, the medium is displaced in the y-direction, and the wave is traveling in the x-direction. So we've got a wave that's moving in this direction here. So this is y, and this is x. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a single point on the wave. And so at this point, we've got some oscillator here. And over time, this oscillator is going to move down to here till it gets to its lowest point, And then it's going to go back up and end up back where it started up here. And that is going to take a time delta t. Well, if you look at this oscillator, it's gone down and it's come back. It's gone through a full cycle. So this time period here is just the period of that oscillator, or since we're talking a wave here, we call it the wave period. And that, of course, is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. Now, if we look at this crest here, as this oscillator moves down, by the time it's got to this position here, this means that the medium at this point is in its lowest position, which means that this wave trough has moved to this point. Then the oscillator goes back up, 
and by that point it means that this wave crest has moved to here. So the period of the oscillator is the equal to the time that it takes for this wave crest to move the, to the position of this wave crest. Now that length, right, because remember we're looking at a length here, that's the distance between two adjacent wave crests. So it's the distance between two points of equal phase, and that is just equal to the wavelength lambda. So now we can ask, well, how long is this time here? So here, the time it takes for this wave crest to move a, distant la a distance lambda is if the speed of the wave is c, then the time it takes is just going to be the distance divided by the speed of the uh, motion, right? So it's distance divided by speed gives us the time that it takes. Now, these two time periods, of course, are equal. The time it takes for the oscillator to come back down here and back up again must be equal to the time it takes this wave crest to get to this point. And so therefore, we have this lambda over c is equal to 1 over f. And if we rearrange that, that tells us that the speed of the wave is equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength. So this is sometimes, in high school, this is called the wave equation, but this is not what physicists call the wave equation. We'll talk about that in a different video. But this is the relationship between the phase velocity here. So this is the phase velocity of the wave and the frequency and the wavelength. Now, remember, we can also write the frequency as um, omega divided by 2 pi, because we know this comes from the fact that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, and omega here being the angular frequency. But we also had this new definition for our uh, wave number. Remember, we defined k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, and so that means we can rewrite lambda as equal to 2 pi divided by um, k. So we can put these two things into our um, relationship for the phase velocity now, and we can write that relationship slightly differently. What we find is that the phase velocity is equal to, well, the frequency is omega divided by 2 pi, lambda is 2 pi over k, so the 2 pi's are going to cancel, and what we're left with is omega here divided by k. So another way to write the phase velocity is that it's the angular frequency of the wave divided by the wave number. So we've talked about the different wave properties and how they're related. Now we need to talk about the different types of waves. And what we've got here is we've got a spring and we're going to send a wave along it. And so what you can see here is that the displacement of the medium was in a direction perpendicular to the motion of the wave. The wave moved from right to left, and the medium was displaced upwards and back down again. So this type of wave is called a transverse wave. And so we can send a wave along a medium like this where the displacement is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. However, if we change our medium, we can demonstrate a different type of wave. So now we've changed our medium to a different type of uh, spring. This is actually a slinky spring that we're stretching quite a bit. And I'm going to create a wave that goes along this. Now, this wave is quite a bit faster, so we might have to slow it down for you to see it. Now, what you should be able to see there is that the medium was displaced forwards and backwards as the wave moved in the same direction. This type of wave is called a longitudinal wave, and the type of wave that you're most common with uh, of hearing, in fact, is a sound wave, and a sound wave or an acoustic wave is an excellent example of a longitudinal wave. So let's show you this one more time. And there we have a longitudinal wave. 
So now we've got several different properties of waves and we've seen the different types of wave, transverse and longitudinal. So the next step in physics for describing waves is we have to come up with a mathematical description for a wave and that's what we'll be doing in the next video.